Okay, now we've talked about this book because we have a friend of the show. Official, I'm going to say he's a friend of the show. At this point, yeah. I All didn't right. realize that he was until we got a Karma Karma from him a few weeks ago. Porn sack. This dude is freaking dope. Um, one of the best writers right now. Like, like, I only read this one book. I've only read this one book, but we have The Good Asian. Hot damn. What did I text you last night, Ryan? Yeah, you sent me several messages that were like, oh my God. I don't, I, let me look it up. I'll look Pull it, it up, up I got man. my phone right here. I'll do Pull it. it up as long as it's not too... There's nothing sexual. Yeah, nothing sexual. Okay, if sexual is okay, just nothing vulgar. I text Ryan some weird stuff, comic fam. I'm just kidding. No, no, no. I just get a little excited a little bit, you know, sometimes. Good Asian. Holy F. <laughs> masterpiece. Top tier writing. Mind blown emoji. These are all just, you know, separate messages. He can't, he can't just combine these all into one convenient message for me. No, 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 no. I had to do it. I actually did. I did that on purpose. I Didn't I do them like line by line? Yes. Yeah. Mind blown. Top tier writing. This right here deserves all the awards that are currently, that it's currently being nominated for. And it is, it's, uh, I've, I follow a porn sack on IG, on IG, on Instagram, and he's been sharing a lot. Like this book has been hitting a lot of top comics of the year lists and rightfully so. All right. Um, we have a uh, porn sack. You, you learn how to say his last name. Porn sack. Peach it shot. Peach it shot. It's tough. Porn I'm, sack, I'm pretty sure I said it wrong show. too. I think I said it right. Um, and then the art, the art is by Alexander Tefingi. That's right. And, um, first off this writer worked at a comic book store. I said, he said it was like one of his first jobs. I saw an interview with him in it and he really understands the need to work with LCSs to have a poll list, to serve your customers in your community. Kind of the nitty gritty behind the scenes of how a comic will live or die. Man, a really great way to intro a creator for me is like, oh no, he's like, he's like, he knows the grind of the people who are actually making the comic books get into the hands of the people that he wants them to. All right, yeah. great first start. But then he makes this. This is um, something that he describes as a, quote, Chinatown noir. That's really, like, if, there, if you just ask for two words to describe this comic, that's perfect. Okay. This comic book is freaking brilliant. It's going to be hard to bear with all of the uh, praise we are about to just dump all over this comic. I'm, I'm gonna, let's just dump all over this book, dude. Yes. Just clip that part out. Yeah. Dump all over it. <laughs> this right here is a book that every single person needs. Like I'll go as far to say, like there's some books you have to own comic fam. Yeah. You could some books that you need to own more than one copy because it will inevitably leave your library shelf because other people will borrow it. You could be like, I'll oh, read this and then you will be without it. And then you need it. You always, so this way you may need to get more than one copy. I don't say that about every book. Watchmen is one of those books for me. Dark Knight Returns is one of those books for me. Stray Dogs was Stray another Dogs one. Stray Dogs is another you get, one. You get several copies. I'm getting Chew. several Nice House on the Lake trades oh, when yeah. that comes out. Chew is on that. Department of Truth yep. is on that. Um, I do Hellboy, of course, for me, because I'm always recommending that. But this right here is, this is just a lesson in how to write a great comic book. Where how to begin? Plan. It's like, uh, do where do we begin? First, do you have the first few pages? Yeah, like, can we go through the first page? Let's, Let's go through the first stage because Let's like this it. right here. So, we're here. We're, right. we're talking about good Asian. Okay. Good Asian. Uh, it's from Porn Image Sack. Comics. Bravo. I'm going to give one more applause. Porn Sack. Hot damn, dude. You made an amazing comic book. Okay. I've already recommended this to like six people and it's been just a little over a day. All right. <laughs> I'm just I'm being serious, dude. I'm like, oh, I'm so excited for you to read this. Okay. So um, I've been listening to Scott Snyder's Substack. Substack is a platform where a lot of creators are going to do like exclusive content. He's essentially doing a podcast over there. You pay a little money every month. You get access to it. It's a show about comic writing. Oh, like the masterclass thing he's yeah. doing kind of. Okay. So I've been listening to his masterclass. He did a whole like great tangent about how to start out a comic book. And like, you don't always need to do it in this way, but a lot of the greats do it. And even he does it. And he goes over like the importance of page one and how Page one could be the setup for the entire narrative. You're kind of foreshadowing it. He used Dark Knight as a return. He even used his own Batman stories as a, as an example, um, specifically Court of Owls, Court of Owls, and yeah. Death of the Family. So we have the first page of this. I read this. I literally had to put the comic down. I said to myself, "Holy smokes! I have to fix my lighting. I have to reread the first page again. I have something special on my lap." This is important. This is a moment in comic book history. We image. I'm going to pray to the image gods. Is that McFarlane? 
Is McFarlane right? one of your buddy buddy with him? I'm not buddy buddy with McFarlane. You talk to him. I mean, I've never a, talked to briefly, him briefly. You've seen the conversation. We're not like buddy buddies. Just next you know. interview you do with Tom McFarlane, you should just slip in. Like, can you make a good Asian hardcover, please. We need a good Asian hardcover of this. We do. It's I'll ten make issues. It's ten issues. It's it's almost done. Issue seven just this, dropped last we week. We need it. We absolutely need it. Okay. First page. Um, being able to just kind of go over. Talk about lettering, though. Like, okay. Like that, okay. Those, yeah. Hit that me with font, this like that. Just the word 1936 right there. Just the specific Art Deco like font style just transports you exactly where you need to be. This right here tells you it's going to be a noir. A noir. This right here tells you the time, the place. Gold. Mention it, and boom, folks, forgive anything. Why are we talking about gold? We're talking about Golden Gate Bridge right there. 1936, San Francisco, Golden Gate Bridge. Take San Francisco, the Golden Gate City. People that get so distracted by the golden, they for, they ignore it's a gate. Oh, yes. That's when you, you have Port to like, sack, yes. You have to like slow down and be so like, good. this is going to be like a heavy, like, that is good. it's a gate. Like I never thought about it. It's a Golden Gate Bridge. Like I never debated like why that, why you know, it has that name. But do you know why? No. Because you're focused on the damn goal. Exactly. Not I'm distracted. the gate. And what are gates for? Exactly. We're going to get to it. People get so distracted by the golden, they ignore the gate. What do we see? We see people in town. We see them driving, smoking a cigarette, maybe a, a couple waiting in line. Got to get to the show. Just listen the to the music. You got all these trumpets, the street cars, like the, the fashion, the hats that people have. This just throws you head first into 1936 right here. Which is it's joyful. I want to be there, yeah. right? You want to be there. They ignore why it's a gate because gates are built for peace of mind. We see even a boy right here in the corner. And what is he doing? He's shoe shine. He's working, yo. It's late, but you gotta pay the bills. This dude's getting his shoes nice around the newspaper. They ignore why it's a gate, because gates are built for peace of mind. People are cheering. All right. They're cheering and they're living it up. And what's on the newspaper? Germany declares mandatory draft to Hitler youth to keep things out so you never have to think. Oh hot damn. What's the next page? You never have to think. About what's trying to get in. Which really gets to the whole heart of this comic is a is a story about the immigrant experience. Like, and that's why one of the reasons I love it is because you really have a, a book that works on two different levels. It's a detective mystery featuring the first generation of Americans to come to age under the immigration ban of the Chinese, which would then later be extended to, I believe, Asians and Arabs as well. We follow one of the first Asian detectives in America whose primary job is to police his own people. Also, to deal with his own family struggles, yeah. but then his own internal struggles of having to balance both the responsibility of being a detective in a world that is struggling for people like himself in his own culture. Yeah, I just love like the duality of this book. Like It's half amazing detective noir story, which I love. I've like, that's the reason I pulled the trigger on Ruth this Baker, book. Baker, you know, like, right. I love noir. I love detectives, the hard boiled. This is very much like a Humphrey Bogart kind of comic. Like this would have been like the Maltese Falcon or some kind of old school 1930s black and white detective story, which it very much works on that level. Even alone, that would have made this an awesome comic, but it has the underlying immigration racism it's got a lot of like social messages underneath, and the mixture of those two is is why this book sings. It's about race, but it's not about race. Sure. Does that make sense? Yes. And it's so well done. The way that this comic is paced, the way that the panels look at this look at the barbed wire around this whole thing. Do you even notice right. the barbed wire? That's genius. It's every there's so many genius moments in this comic book that I cannot. I cannot stress enough, Colin Fam. This is a book that is very important that came out that everyone needs to read. Um, we find our lead character in a. Excuse me. Well, how would you describe this? Because this is like the holding, the, the holding last shelters. Panel, the last right? page you were just looking at. Yeah, let's go over that. That's probably that's probably better. We should probably talk about that first. It's the immigration process. So when you're coming east from China to get into the west coast of America, this is an island off the coast of San Francisco. Right next to Alcatraz, actually. Yeah. Where person. they, it's like Ellis Island, but on the West Coast. Like for immigrants coming into the country to get like vetted and to get all your, your papers set up and everything, they do an extensive interview here. And then while they're checking everything out, you have to kind of wait on this island for a long time. Right. And that's what the next page is. It kind of shows you the conditions in this very real place. And the, the other thing I love about this comic is at the back of every issue, there's a 
couple page essay about like some of the real life historical stuff that he researched for this book. Oh, he had a historian consultant to make sure that these panels were accurate, that the way that these individuals spoke was correct, that this is all something that could be as spot on as you would expect if you were put in a time machine, just like in time before time, and you're flashing back to 1930s. Sure. All right. And we find a character who is he kind of sticks out in this um, because they're like in these holding shelters, you know, vetting through Asian Americans, making sure that they're not going to cause any type of political problem. They're worried about spies and stuff like that right. at this time. And that's why they're doing these bans. They're worried about war breaking out. They're blaming them for the depression for the prior years of America. So it's all bad. But these individuals, they're thinking they're going to be stuck in this like holding pattern for just a couple of days. And these individuals are stuck in these horrendous situations, these tiny shelters for weeks and some months. Yeah. All right. They do a good job of the colors right here, too, of just making everything the same color. So everyone just kind of blends together. Oh, because because to the police there, right? they're all the same. Exactly. It's subtle. Really? It's a subtle colorization there, but Every that's that's pretty thing. much what it comes down to. God. Oh, look at this. The next day. OK, so in this holding shelter, we are introduced to one person who's in a suit. He was there for quite a while. He kind of right. gets roped in because they got to vet him. Right. But he turns out to be a detective. He's also friends. They make a they make a point to mention that he's friends with a family of millionaires. That's right. And so the the higher ups at this, I don't want to say detention center. That's not the right word. But the higher ups here kind of go like, oh, we didn't realize you had rich friends, so we're gonna you know fast track you. And he's he's kind of brought into the country. That's right. He's brought into the country because he is one of the first Asian American detectives, and we get introduced to him in one of the most epic ways. He's just accompanying other policemen as they're interrogating some individuals. They believe them to be criminals. And that's also part of this narrative is that there are criminals that they're having to manage. That's the, part of the reason why there's problems here. But also you have poverty and you have, you know, uh, unstable government that's kind of pushing individuals to make bad decisions as well. So right. it's, it's also very political, but it's really good. And we get introduced to our lead character. Edison we have Hark. Edison freaking Hark. And this dude is so damn cool. Just lurking in the shadows back here, just like eyeballing this whole scene. His partner is a big racist cop, yep. and they're like interrogating this family of Chinese immigrants. And Edison Hark is just back here in the shadows, lighting up a cigarette. Classic noir here, which I love. So, this guy, Edison, he has this like, I don't know, I compare it to like Sean from Psych, compare it to Adrian Monk. This dude can see what other people don't see. All right. He's got that detective eye, that that Bruce Wayne detective level of intrigue and being able to spot things no one else sees. And it, it, it goes from such a heavy setup in just a couple pages to like, oh, no, we're following a badass here. That's what I was saying before. It's like the combination of the immigrant story mixed with the we're getting thrown full force into the detective side of this story, which kind of bleeds into the in entire series. There we go. This right here. Look at him. He's just sitting back, watching police officers do what they're going to do, being probably going too far, in, yeah. you know, in, in some cases here. And he's just chilling in the back, smoking a cigarette, watching everything. And look at the squares, the squares there. That's that's what he sees. He's focusing in on this plant here. He's focusing on what this person's got on his face. Comic fam, this right here. Is what good yeah, comics the, are about. Badge. Just the, I love the art and the layouts and the colors. And like the book is pretty. Oh, even man. on a non, non story level. This is a very, very good looking book. The color work does so much because like when you're flipping through this, like I'm not going to spoil too much more of this comic book for you, but there are pages here that are just straight up red. Yeah. Why is it red? Because it's sexy. Right. Lust. They use colors to uh, accentuate the mood of the certain of the pages. It's green. It's soft green on this page. That's kind of like the flashback color they use, like a little flashback. faded, faded green. It's just family, sorrow, um, you know, trying to grow, trying to deal with things. Negative space. And for me, I, I love comic books, but I'm starting to get more and more tired of superhero stories. This right here is a nice mix of both to a degree because it's not superhero. God, no. But this character does have a heightened sense 
of observation. That, of observation. So there is a level like of daredevil. Super. He's not daredevil. No, 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 no. Like this isn't a superpower, but he's just very observant, and they use these red squares to kind of draw our attention to the things he is noticing here. Like his partner. That's right. Once bought a fancy suit. Yeah, re- just read this right here because this will happen s- throughout the book. But right. there'll just be a bunch of dialogue, not dialogue, a bunch of text that will separate the panels with purpose. And I was going to hit you with some information. You don't really know why you're being hit with it, but you'll find out in a moment. I'm looking at his suit, custom made with a silk lining, but the fraying around the sleeves goes back years. Meanwhile, the deeply caked mustard stains on his lapel is recent. Why did a bull, a cop, Vain enough for a pricey suit, suddenly stop caring. Ooh, and then what, is you, what do you see here? You see the sleeves, you see the mustard stain. So it, 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 that just points it out. Like, he bought a good suit at one point, but eventually he stopped caring. And yep, just those three panels kind of draws you into this partner. And what he sees. All right. And there, here we go. We have some muck duck. Murder. <laughs> murder, yes. That's right. We have some murder. He is investigating things. His family's... Uh, history is trying to do, uncover some murder happened there as well. A missing persons case is wrapped up in all this. There's, it's just a solid detective story. And if you have any interest in film noir or yeah, detective, detective movies, detective comics like this, this is, this is solid, especially if like me, you are getting a little tired of the overdone superhero genre. This right here is a great book. A tra- in my opinion, some people, when they want to get into comics, the reason why they don't, I've had this experience so many times, they're like, I don't want to read something like Superhero. Right. Give them something like this. This is honestly going to be on my uh, top 10 comics of the year. Should like, we I, do I have, one? I haven't, yeah. done, I haven't done my own ranking yet. I'll tell but you, this has made my top 10 for sure. This yeah. Year. It may be two years, dude. Like this right here, this is something special, comic fam, and I can't stress it enough. Get this comic book. The historical accuracies alone are impressive in the back of this trade and the individual comic books you actually see breakdowns of the like the time that went into like the research the real world porn historical sex, basis porn sex said that he spent years prepping for this right and he has also another book the infidel that's a horror narrative that i cannot wait to get to i haven't read it yet it's about like a ghost in an apartment building that feeds off of like racism and xenophobia and uh, stuff and yeah. it's, got, it's got really cool art in there Infidel's awesome okay this is what it's about, comic fam. Take a look. Get that. Uh, again, one more round of applause. It's special. It's a hey, special It's almost book. done. It's going to be done in a couple of months. There's only three issues left, so. All right. 